Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Complete Sports Media's podcast. I'm your host, Darren Campbell, and doing a weekend wrap-up as usual, Jason Cameron. Uh, hey, man, how's it going? Good, good. It was a little, little wet out there today. Yeah. Wet. It, it started out nice, like super nice, yeah. and then I forgot it was nice because it got so awful at the end. Oh, man, yeah, that rain was bad, and uh, I hear uh, it's going to be with us for a couple of weeks so uh yeah it was nice this weekend uh nice this morning and then all of a sudden wow a storm came in and uh yeah we got wet yeah we sure did it's kind of nice though to know that we're gonna have weeks upon weeks oh hold on upon weeks of just <laughs> rain and yeah. dark clouds ah it's gonna be great i look forward yeah. to it and Good. we're uh, we're about a week away from them changing the clocks, so uh, it'll be darker even earlier, and uh, that always makes people real happy. So, yeah, we're we're in for some more sadness, I guess. Yes, yes, we are. But at least the good thing is we we do have something to look forward to. Like we, there is a holiday coming up next week, so yeah, that, that's that's nice. It's going to be kind of in the middle of the week this time around, so that's. Yeah, Thursday. I think we got Thursday off. Thursday, yeah, that's true. Uh, some people call the what we had yesterday as a bit of a holiday. Halloween. Uh, did you do anything for Halloween? Well, I I guess like you know I turned off all my lights just to make sure that nobody knew. Everybody knew not to come to my door. I don't have no candy because I'm a Scrooge. I, I don't like children, but no. I, I, I really didn't do too much, man. I, I kicked my feet up and uh, I watched football. I, I didn't. Yeah. Nice. nice. That, that was my Halloween. What's, really uh, what's the best costume you've ever worn? Good question. Oh, man, that's a good question. Probably um, behind this one. So years ago, I went out with friends okay. to Vegas for right. Halloween. Wow. I wanted to get like one of those 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 priest habits you know one of those right. but when i went to value village to get one of those uh the the uh the attendant was just like no I, I don't have one of those but then she started smirking laughing to herself and i'm like what what's so funny what, what, what what's so funny she goes i do have a nun's outfit now <laughs> to put it in perspective i did have French braids. I had long French braids in my hair. All right. Okay. And so that's why she suggested the nun's outfit because Whoopi Goldberg, nuns on the run. That's oh, what I look like. Okay. All I right. look like a very muscular Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> and so did you buy it? So did you actually get it? I lost you for a second there. So did you? Oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I lost you but for a second, but. So yeah, did, yeah, I so know, did I know. you wear the so did you wear the nuns outfit? Yes, I did. I did, <laughs> and it was a huge hit. A huge hit. Everybody was like, "Look at that! It, it's a muscular Whoopi Goldberg. Get get a picture with that guy. Get a picture with him right now." Yeah, it was it was funny, man. That's it was, hilarious. It was hilarious. Oh man, hilarious. Must have been lots fun. of fun. So I guess that would be my best one. What about you? Uh never done Vegas yeah. for Halloween. <laughs> it was fun. I've had some uh, great costumes. Uh, usually my best were when I uh, dressed up like one of the members of KISS, uh, put the makeup on my face. I also went as the uh, the Warriors, um, uh, the Baseball Fury makeup on our face. We'd carry baseball bats around. And, uh, if anybody messed with us, we'd be able to uh, give them a shot with a baseball bat. So. Uh, those were uh, my favorite memories. <laughs> Definitely painting my face and then going out and having a lot of fun. All right, that's awesome. That, yeah. That's great. Because Halloween is it's, it's supposed to be like that. You're supposed to go out there, have fun, eat candy, or eat your kids' candy. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, okay, the Monday Nighters happening. Uh, the last game of Week Eight. Uh, typically halfway through the season, but uh, we got to wait one more week. Uh, the Giants are actually leading uh, just into the fourth quarter. Evan Engram just got a five-yard TD catch from Daniel Jones, and they're up 17-14. Uh, 
Chiefs are really not looking good this year if they're having this much trouble, even with the Giants. Not good. Not 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 good, man. I because like and on any given Monday or Sunday, the Chiefs beat the Giants. They yeah. just beat them. But this is this is weird. But hey, you know what? There's still time left. It's still the whole fourth quarter. So no time to panic yet, Chiefs fans. Let's, let's see what they can do. These two teams uh, barely ever play each other. It's been eight years since uh, these two franchises had a game against each other. It was actually Andy Reid's fourth game ever with the Chiefs. He's been there eight seasons. And, um, yeah, so it's weird to see these two clashing tonight. Yeah, it's, it's a little odd. But at the same time, I guess I guess the Chiefs haven't, haven't faced the Giants for so long that they forgot that uh, they're not supposed to beat them <laughs> or be leading at any point in time in this game. That's okay. That's yeah. Okay. Daniel Jones having a good night, 17 for 24, 189 yards, a couple of TDs. Uh, and um, Devontae Booker having a great game, 13 carries, 56 yards, as well as four catches for 62 yards. John Ross has a couple catches for 72 for the Giants. Kyle Rudolph and Evan Ingram with the TDs there for them. Uh, Tyreek Hill has a Chiefs touchdown. Uh, it, through the air, and Derek Gore has the touchdown on the ground. Um, Daryl Williams having a big night with a lot of touches, but um, Kelsey's been quiet. Um, yes, still missing some of their weapons, but uh, I would be surprised if uh, the Giants pull this one out. I would be very surprised too, but then again, this week has been uh, full of some surprises. Yeah. <laughs> Number one being the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding yeah that was a shocker uh everybody was really surprised that they uh they had such an amazing game and uh white was able to come in and and uh look like tom brady it was uh unbelievable 405 yards through the air three touchdowns uh nobody would have put money on that going in he's the he's only the second quarterback to have had his first career start passing for 400 yards the other person Cam Newton. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that happened a long time ago. Yeah. I got some more details about that to talk about later, but yeah, that, uh, that was really surprising, but yeah, there have been quite a bit, few surprises this year. Uh, really shocking uh, that the chiefs are uh, having such a hard time and a lot of um, unpredictability. Definitely uh, with the salary cap, I think it, you know, keeps so many teams in the middle, not really gr super great teams, not that many really low teams, so many in the middle. Uh, we are seeing a few teams that really can't get it together, but uh, the Jets, uh, yeah, winning against Cincinnati, that was that was the stunner of the weekend for sure. Oh, yeah. I, I would definitely, definitely say it was a stunning turn of events, so to speak. Uh, Tennessee Titans, uh, number one team in the AFC, but dealt a massive blow with Derrick Henry being out. Uh, they say he's slated for foot surgery and uh, will be out probably the season. Um, they decided to reach into the uh, sort of the re, um, recycling pile and pulled out Adrian Peterson just signed today with the Titans. Uh, the 36-year-old will be suiting up for the Titans uh, this coming Sunday. Wow. What? You know what? Maybe I'm not... Maybe I've just forgot. When did he... When, did, when was he out of the league? Was that last year? I, you know what? I have no idea when he left the game. Yeah. He, he played a little bit last year, but, uh, yeah, wasn't effective. Didn't get the ball very much. And, um, yeah, he just didn't have... Any takers this year? Uh, running back is that position that they give up on you. As soon as you turn usually 30, they're like, throw you on the scrap heap and say, see ya. But uh, he's been able to do well. He's the fifth all-time leading rusher in NFL history. And, um, yeah, we'll see if he's was keeping in shape and, uh, you know, still has something to give them. But uh, that's a massive blow. I cannot believe... Uh, how much I thought they're overusing Henry, even though he's just such a massive guy and such a workhorse. 
Uh, if you overwork these guys, the inevitability of an injury is just going to happen. Of course, and especially at running back because they just – the nature of their position is just to get hit all the time. So, yeah. Uh, I was kind of shocking. Uh, I saw him have his uh, shoe off earlier in the, in the first quarter, and they were looking at his foot, put it back on. He ended up playing 54 of 73 offensive snaps. Um, he, uh, yeah, he's led the NFL this year with 937 yards already, 10 TDs, uh, 219 carries and second is Joe Mixon with 137. So, you know, way overusing him, uh, last year he had 378 carries with, uh, ended up with 2,027 yards, only the eighth guy in history with. Uh, 2,000 rushing yards in a season. Um, the Titans, uh, you know, we're just overusing them. Uh, you know, they have uh, one four in a row and they're doing great, but uh, now he's out. Uh, boom, that really, really uh, reduces their chances of going very far. Yeah, it uh, definitely hurts their uh, Super Bowl aspirations. That's for sure without that guy in the backfield. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what shakes down of the next few days. Their backup running back, Darrington Evans, was lost last week to a knee injury. And, um, yeah, I don't know if they're going to look to the trade uh, market. Uh, trade deadlines tomorrow. Um, there's already been a trade uh, made today that was um, quite shocking. Uh, Vaughn Miller is going to the L.A. Rams for a couple of draft picks, a second and third round pick next year's draft and Denver's actually taking care of uh, pretty much his whole entire salary. So uh, I don't know why, you know, people just give the Rams such great uh, guys and don't ask for much in return, but uh, yeah, the rich get richer. I'm not sure why Denver's making this move. Oh, interesting because so they give, give away their best defensive player. They just go, ah, you know what? I like you. I like you a lot. You want this guy? He's pretty good. <laughs> like, look at how, Jesus, like the upgrade that the Rams has got on defense is massive. Yeah. It's massive. It's, it's ridiculous. He's had, wow. a produ- he's had a productive season so far. He's recorded four and a half sacks. Uh, he's had 30 quarterback pressures. Um, he was really looking good. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a legend in, in Denver, um, getting that MVP of the Super Bowl 50, getting that huge win over Carolina. Uh, he was one of the first draft picks ever made by uh, John Elway. And uh, it looks like Kansas City. Oh, no, I think it touched the ground. Oh, it touched the ground, eh? It touched the ground, yeah. Okay. They're going to call it back. Yeah, yeah. They sure did. They- yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and, and you know, it's not a salary situation because they're taking uh, the whole salary and paying his salary to for him to not even play there. That's uh, I yeah. don't know what the heck's going on. It's so bizarre. Like maybe maybe there was an agreement made uh, within the contract that he's uh, he can do this or the 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 team would do something for him yeah. because it looks sounds like they're just doing him a solid. They're doing him a favor. I guess. Like so. A huge, massive favor. You know, so that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Uh, he has a, had a little bit of a banged up ankle this year, but uh, joining Aaron Donald, uh, Jalen Ramsey, all the, you know, top guys that they have on, on the Rams, uh, man, uh, uh, look out. Uh, holy crap. That was a hell of a move. Uh, do you think we're going to see? Uh, many big moves uh, today or tomorrow. I uh, no, the only other big move I can possibly possibly see, obviously, involves the Sean Watson. But at the same time, I don't I don't know who would be brave enough to take him. I know that there's been grumblings and rumblings of the Carolina Panthers, possibly because they're not uh, um, quite convinced of Sam Darnold in, in the back there as their QB. So. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's about that's that's all I can think of, yeah. because like you know, yeah. 
Yeah, it's funny in the NFL, the trade deadline is not as big as uh, some of the other sports. Um, I don't see a ton of movement, but um, yeah, Deshaun Watson, uh, you know, I, 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 if I was an organization, wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole with all the legal troubles he has and, and all the things that have been going on in his life. But um, yeah, some teams might be getting desperate, uh, realizing their season could be down the tubes, but him not playing, I don't know how much you know, in shape he's being. Having to go into a new system, try to learn it. Uh, pretty difficult halfway through a year for a quarterback to come in and, and make a big difference, don't you think? Yeah, I, I think it would be supremely difficult, especially given the fact that uh, we don't know what he's been doing. <laughs> like, has, is he in shape? Has he keeping himself in shape? Yeah. Has he been keeping himself, trying to keep himself game ready? Mm. Don't know. They don't know. Don't know. Yeah, exactly. I, I'd be shocked and surprised if he was able to come in and, and take a struggling franchise and, and take them somewhere where, you know, they want to go. Uh, it, yeah, it wouldn't really make sense, but we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, okay, well, why don't we start breaking down games? Um, as usual, we usually start with the NFC West. Uh, so we got to go back to Thursday, uh, the Arizona Cardinals game. Uh, the 72 Dolphins players popped some champagne that night as uh, they are the last undefeated full team that uh, went undefeated through the regular season and won the Super Bowl. Uh, 1972 Dolphins uh, and Arizona was the last unbeaten team uh, came up against Green Bay. And um, yeah, strangely enough, even though Green Bay was missing their three top receivers, uh, they were able to pull out the win uh, basically because of the two Aaron's Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, put those two together. You have a victory and uh, seven straight wins for the Packers uh, beating the Cardinals that, that night. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, Packers proved that the Cardinals can be beat. They can be beat, but uh, luckily for the Packers, they're a good team. Because that's the only team that's going to beat those Cardinals is a very good team. And the Packers yeah. are a very good team. Rodgers went 22 of 37, 184 yards, two touchdowns. Jones, 59 yards on the ground with one touchdown himself. And Randall Cobb made an appearance. Yeah. Only three recorded catches, 15 yards, but two touchdowns. Big game. Big game for Cobb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's so happy. I know Aaron Rodgers is so happy to get Cobb back. Uh, that was tough for him to be. Uh, out out of the organization for a few years, but um, yeah, to get two touchdowns on three short catches, uh, and you know, as I said, Aaron Jones, man, they use him a lot. Uh, one touchdown uh, on the ground and seven catches uh, through the air. Um, but yeah, I was shocked. Uh, I know you had a little bet going, uh, and I fully expected you to uh, collect on that. And then you know, for uh, for Green Bay to pull it off without their three top receivers, most teams would not be able to win without the three top receivers. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I probably kind of forgot that Rodgers is, I don't know, he was an MVP of the league and he's still really good. Uh, and it didn't help that uh, that Douglas guy, Douglas character in the, in, the, in the secondary for the Packers, made that interception, sealed the win. Russell, and then, uh, yeah, Russell Douglas, yeah. yeah. With Phil Douglas, but then AJ Green forgot to. I don't know. Look back. Hey, it's the ball oh, coming at me. Oh, oh, would you look at? Oh man, oh. that was painful. That was so what? painful. Oh man, I couldn't believe it. He goes into the end zone and he doesn't even. Yeah, it doesn't even turn around. And boom, the ball's picked off. And uh, he's like, "What happened there?" Well, so uh, you're going in the end zone. Turn around to let the quarterback hit you. you. Don't just run in there and look around. Oh man, that was ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it, it was ridiculous. Like, I, I guess they were just they were not on, they were not on the same page. At least I think that's what Kyler Murray said. I guess we weren't on the same page. Yeah. I thought he turned around. He, he, he clearly did not. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess he had a bit of an off night with two picks, but um, yeah, I yeah, it was very weird. Uh, they had they, they scored their uh, touchdowns on the ground with Chase Edmonds getting one and James Conner getting two. DeAndre had a bit of an off night with two catches for 68, six yards. And 
Um, but yeah, no touchdowns through the air. That's pretty surprising for the Cardinals. Yeah, it, w- it was it was surprising because they've always scored a touchdown through the air. But they for this particular game, they were doing it on the ground and they were being very successful. And also, too, like at that, that last drive to try to win the game, yeah, they were marching down the field. Everything was going according to plan until he threw it in the end zone and then and it fell apart. And then I lost my money. So, yeah. Great win for the Packers. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Cardinals go to San Fran to play the Niners on Sunday, and Green, Bla- Green Bay will play against the Chiefs. Uh, that's the 125 start time, uh, Pacific time. Uh, these Chiefs will have the short week playing tonight. 17 all, just about halfway through the fourth quarter quarter um yeah we'll try to update you a little bit uh so the rams were happy the cardinals lost as now they're tied on top of the nfc west seven and one uh they blew out houston uh 38 22 they were up 38 to nothing and they were 16 and a half point favorites and then they just gave up let houston score 22 points and screw everybody that had picked them in the betting. Uh, that was just brutal bad beat for that to happen. 38 nothing. you're like, this is in the bag. I got this bet for sure. Probably people went and bought things with the money they thought they were going to win. And then they go and le- let 22 straight points happen, and it only was 16 points. So everybody that bid on the Rams lost. It was brutal. It was almost as if, they did it on purpose. It's like it shows you right for gambling on this sport. <laughs> because, because it's like honestly, it's like you're up 38 nothing. Like what are we what are we doing here? This is the Texans. They shouldn't put any points on us. Oh. Should be a done deal. Oh, uh, just insane. Just insane. Like, oh man, I feel bad for the, all those people that bet on the Rams. Like 16 half points is too much. You should. Stay away from stuff like that when you see it, but oh my God, you know, crazy. Uh, Stafford had a phenomenal game, uh, just looking great. 300 yards passing, three TDs. Uh, Daryl Henderson had another big game. Uh, Cooper Cup, man, this guy's having an incredible year. Another 115 yards and seven catches and a TD. Um, Woods was great. Uh, he had one touchdown on the ground and one through the air. Um, there's tons of weapons there in, in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rams have uh, a plethora of weapons, um, and they 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 have a bounty of goods on that offensive side of the ball, football, and uh, they and Stafford knows how to use it. He knows how to use his weapons well. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Uh, Rams uh, seven and one, Texans one and seven. Uh, I wouldn't have. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Ex- Predicted that fourth quarter, 22 points for the Texans. Uh, I don't even know how that uh, how that happened. But um, anyway, uh, Rams host the Titans on the Sunday nighter, which will be a great game. Uh, Houston goes to Miami to play the Dolphins. Uh, both teams struggling, so should be probably pretty tight there. Uh, also in the NFC West, the Seahawks took care of business. They beat the Jags 31-7. to um, Jags are terrible, was expected this would happen, but finally DK Metcalf had a big game. Tyler Lockett looked great. Um, Geno Smith uh, seems to, you know, have finally, uh, you know, got on the same page as these guys and uh, nice to see Seahawks, you know, finally get some offense going. Yeah. Yeah, man. The Seahawks looked great, but then again, they were gifted the opponent of the Jags to look great against. So that's really cool. Geno <laughs> um, Smith, 20, 24, 195 yards, two touchdowns. And then he had one on the ground too. So he kind of he kind of did it all. And Lockett, 12 receptions for 142 yards. Man, had a huge game. Massive, Man. yeah. Yeah, I, I had been – Talking about how angry I was at the Hawks for um, not throwing to DK Metcalf very much. I have a, uh, a bit of a graphic here. Uh, there was uh, 31 consecutive plays without a target 
to DK Metcalf in that Saints game after he had got that 84 yard touchdown early, 31 consecutive plays. They didn't throw the ball to him against the Steelers. Uh, there was 19 consecutive plays where they didn't against the Rams in week five, 15 consecutive plays uh, with no targets. So I don't really know what was going on there. Don't know why uh, he wasn't getting the, the targets, wasn't getting the ball, but uh, for him to get uh, a couple touchdowns, uh, he must be a lot happier and nice to see him getting in the end zone and 12 receptions for Lockett. Like, he was just beating them badly through that secondary. Yeah, yeah. He was just running free back there, running wild and running free and just catching footballs and just like loving light. Yeah. So he, he had himself a monster game, man. Monster game. The Jags are just pathetic. I, I couldn't believe I saw two, uh, two, too many men on the field penalties in a row. I don't, I, I don't think in all of football – 50 years I've been watching football. I haven't seen a team screw up and have too many men on the field twice in a row. Uh, it was just pathetic. Uh, this team uh, needs a big shakeup, and I don't know. Uh, I don't know if the coach can can last the season. Uh, it's been horrible there. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I agree with you on that. I don't know if the coach is going to be able to survive this season of ineptitude that uh, the Jags have uh, shown all of us for this particular season. So um, I I think, obviously, I think there's going to, I think there's going to be obviously a coaching change at some point, but at the same time too, the Jags team as a whole needs to improve. You need to give that Lawrence kid some help offensively because he, he clearly, he can't do it on his own, which is what he's trying to do right now. Yeah. I like to see the Seahawks defense have a really good game. Quandre Diggs had a pick. Uh, Ugo Omadi had eight tackles. Bobby Wagner had seven tackles, seven assists. And Jamal Adams was a force with five tackles, five assists. Uh, really, they needed that confidence booster, I think. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it will help. Uh, they have a bye week this week. So uh, nice to uh, get a little more time to try to get Russ back into the fold. Uh, and the Jags host the Bills. So uh, more trouble brewing for them. Uh, and, and yeah, they're, they're in, in all sorts of trouble facing the bills. Uh, okay. And the 49ers in that NFC West, they had a huge win over Chicago, 33, 22, uh, three guys had huge games for them. Jimmy G threw for 322 yards and he ran for two touchdowns. Eli Mitchell had 18 carries for 137 yards and a touchdown. And Debo Samuel, six catches for 171 yards through the air. Uh, all three guys were just monsters uh, on Sunday. Yeah, and, and Debo Samuel broke Jerry Rice's record of 781 yards with 819 yards through the first seven games of the season. Wow. And uh, that just shows you just how monster of a season Debo Samuel is having right now. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, you don't beat Jerry Rice's records unless you've had some uh, phenomenal, phenomenal performances. And uh, I always considered before Tom Brady came around, I always considered Jerry Rice the best football player to ever live. And, yep. uh, you know, he was uh, able to push records way out in the stratosphere that you thought um, mo- might not be broken. But uh, yeah, Debo has um, just lately just been unbelievable. Yeah. He's been killing it lately. He He's, He's been the one bright spot consistently on the 49ers offense. Yeah. Uh, Justin Fields uh, hasn't been utilized too much through the year since he's uh, taken over, but 175 uh, yards through the air, but 103 yards on the ground for him with a touchdown run. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, he is, he is very, very elusive, very tough guy to bring around, bring down, but, um, yeah, he's got to get uh, a few more yards through the air, uh, I think, to uh, really have a balanced attack. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with you on that. And then also, too, um, being judicious on when he does run because, yeah, it, it's, it's all good. It's all fair and good to run as a running quarterback. But, you know, you're going to get hits. And then that's what makes the coaches, your head coach, very, very nervous. Yeah. Very, very nervous. Yeah, no kidding, yeah. <laughs> Taking abuse there. 
Um, yeah, speaking of that, uh, did you hear Jameis Winston uh, will be lost for the season, torn ACL and an MCL uh, tear. Uh, he'll be gone for the year. Uh, that really is a huge blow to the Saints. Um, and that and that's Jameis Winston? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, because he, that was their guy. Like, you know, even though sometimes he's not their guy, but pretty much, yeah, that's their guy. And I don't know who's going to be the guy to replace Jameis because I think – is Taysom Hill still injured? Yeah, yeah, they think maybe he'll come – back this week but uh he is still injured yeah yeah so they don't even know if he's if he's going to be available in time wow. and uh yeah yeah the saints because the saints did the one of the impossible things of this sunday they beat the bucks yeah beat them. <laughs> so, yeah well that was uh kind of the revenge game for Jameis. Uh, i think he was really yeah. excited to be able to face his former team and get a victory but uh yeah he was carted off fairly early but uh, it was incredible that, um, ta- uh, that Tom Brady wasn't able to pull off the win. Uh, he has 50 career comeback wins, and uh, you saw him get the ball late. You thought, oh, yeah, he's going to march down and pull this off, and uh, he was picked off, and, uh, yeah, the Saints got a re- pick six, and uh, that was it. Uh, Saints pulled off the massive upset. Yeah, they did, and it was weird because it was unexpected. <laughs> because he- you look at Tom Brady, just go, ah, I guess this game's over. Even if he's behind, you just you just kind of assume he's just going to pull it off because yeah. he's always pulled it off. Yeah. It's just kind of what he does. It's what he does. Yeah, you fully, I fully expected, uh, yeah, he was going to do it. Um, uh, yeah, he has eight career comebacks after trailing by 16-plus points, uh, tied for the most all-time. They trailed 23-7. to seven. And suddenly they were coming back, coming back. And and then uh, Saints went back ahead. And then you thought, yeah, this is what he does. He's uh, going to take the ball and and march down the field and and pull this off. But that pick six by P.J. Williams, um, huge. Uh, it was his, uh, yeah, that, that was it. The, that was the game. But uh, Trevor Simeon came over, took over for... Jameis and uh, looked not too bad. I uh, I thought, um, yeah, he, he served himself well getting in there. 16 for 29, 159 yards and a touchdown in relief. And uh, maybe the, uh, maybe he's the guy they're going to go to uh, coming Sunday. Well, they're going to have to go to somebody. And it looks like uh, if, if they had to choose somebody and if Taysom Hill is not going to be available as of yet, I guess Simeon's the man. Yeah. Or they're just going to be doing a healthy dose of Kamara at you all day, every day. He only had 19 attempts for 61 yards. He did score a touchdown, but maybe going forward in the next couple of games, he's going to see his uh, usage rate up quite a bit in the next yeah. couple of games. Yeah. Uh, Brady had a great game, 375 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, that's his 38th career four touchdown game. And um, Antonio Brown was out. And so a guy, Cyril Grayson, uh, took over his spot. Uh, he got a 50-yard touchdown catch, his first catch in more than four years. Uh, great to see a guy have an opportunity and, and uh, do a great thing. And uh, Chris Godwin was huge, 140 yards on eight catches and a touchdown. And Mike Evans had another touchdown. Giovanni Bernard. Uh, Saints won three in a row, and they're looking pretty good. They host the Falcons in that early window on Sunday and Tampa Bay has a week off. Their next opponent isn't until November 14th against the Washington football team. So, uh, okay. Continuing on with the NFC South, um, Carolina got their fourth win with a 19, 13 win over Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta sits uh, half a game back of the Panthers, Panthers four and four Atlanta, three and four. Uh, the Canadian running back Chuba Hubbard for the Panthers uh, got the lone touchdown for them, and he had 24 carries for 82 yards and, and a catch. Uh, Sam Darnold didn't look very good. He got benched, and uh, but they were able to um, able to get the win. Uh, Stephon Gilmore made his Panthers debut and had a 
a nice pick uh, in his first game off the injured reserve list. Uh, Matt Ryan had an off day. And um, yeah, Carolina's, um, yeah, four and four now. Uh, pretty surprising because Sam Darnold's been up and down, up and down, but got four wins. Yeah, he's got four wins. Um, four more wins than he ever could have gotten for the New York Jets in probably two or three years. So, yeah, he's pretty happy. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, he's, um, yeah, he's got to be happy. And, uh, oh, yeah, I was going to mention uh, the uh, uh, Monday Night Football. They, they're showing on TSN, I think TSN 2, they're showing the Monday Night Football with Peyton Manning and Eli Manning. And uh, right now, Mike oh. Irvin is on the, the couch uh, talking, uh, making some commentary. So they're actually finally showing it to us, uh, that feed. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm recording it. Uh, hopefully, yeah, it'll be, there'll be some funny exchanges because uh, I've enjoyed some of the commentary so far. Yeah, and uh, from what I've heard is that, you know, that it's good. It, it's, yeah. it's good, watchable football. Oh, and right now, oh, look, look at that. It's Michael Irvin. Michael. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's just chilling there watching. Uh, it, it is it is funny seeing, uh, like, the third person in their home and you're just, like, just, just chilling and talking to football. <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of cool to see yeah. all three of these guys. Because, like, right now, I'm watching these three guys, and they're all Hall of Famers. All yeah. of them. And it, it's very cool to see the three of them just talking football and just hanging out. It's, it. it's pretty cool. I love it. Yeah, it's really cool. Very, very cool. Atlanta was dealt a huge blow um, on the weekend. Calvin Ridley missed his second game, and he said now he's uh, going to be out in definite period of time. He's dealing with some mental health issues and asked for some assistance from the NFL player assistance program and um uh but uh yeah calvin ridley uh, out of the lineup is a huge blow for atlanta yeah it, it's it's massive because he's one of their best receivers um you know and with him not being in the lineup that just hampers their offense immensely but at the same time if they if he's some suffering from some mental health issues then i'm super happy and then and glad to see that he's getting the help that he needs because some things are bigger than the sport that you play. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, okay. The Panthers play the Patriots in the uh, early window Sunday and the Falcons play the saints. Uh, okay. We've covered the teams in the NFC North. The Packers lead the way seven and one, the bears lost to the Niners and they're three and five. Uh, the Vikings, uh, the Vikings hosted the Cowboys in that Sunday nighter, and it was the Cooper to Cooper show. Cooper rushed to Amari Cooper to pull out the win. Um, Dak Prescott had to sit out with a calf injury. Cooper Rush got his first NFL start, and he looked good. Um, it was uh, pretty crazy how uh, much his. Uh, how much they kept showing his family and how excited they were for him to finally get an opportunity and get a huge one. Yeah. Because I, I don't think he's, I, I think they said he hadn't, this is his first start in four years or something like that. Yeah. Like yeah. He, he's just been buried back there, like with a bunch of other quarterbacks. I didn't even know he was on the team. I didn't even know. I, I didn't know, but yeah. he's got one heck of a football name. Cooper rush. It's a great football name. <laughs> Very cool. Great name, football. Isn't it? Yeah. It's a great name. And he had a huge game. Yeah. But 24 40, 325 yards, two TDs, one interception. And then Amari Cooper, his guy, his guy, eight receptions, 122 yards, and that one touchdown to win them the game. Yeah. It, yeah. it was a beautiful pass, man. Gorgeous beautiful. pass. Yeah. So pretty. And CD Lamb even had over 100 yards uh, uh, receiving, too. Uh, yeah. Their offense looked prolific. I was really shocked. Uh, most people just expected with Dak out, that was it. They were in trouble. Vikings were going to roll, but um, they didn't seem to miss a beat. Uh, I thought they would 
run the ball a lot more. Ezekiel only had 16 carries. Uh, I thought he was going to be upwards of the high 20s, even maybe 30 carries. But uh, they they had a lot of trust in Cooper, and he he did he did really well. Yeah, well, the, it was uh, it was the right kind of trust to put into that man right there. Uh, they emboldened him, and he he did not let down the organization. He had a great game, yeah. had a fantastic game. So. Um, Hopefully he can keep this up until Dak can come back to the team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Kirk Cousins had a bit of an off night. Uh, Dalvin Cook uh, wasn't his usual uh, dominating self. Uh, Adam Thielen had a touchdown for them. But, um, yeah, this Cowboys were a much better team than the, the uh, Vikings for sure. Um, Cowboys host the Broncos, uh, 10 a.m. window on Sunday, and the Vikings go to Baltimore to face the Ravens. Um, okay. Uh, the lowest team in the league closing out the NFC North is the winless Detroit Lions. Uh, just absolutely destroyed 44 to 6 by Philadelphia. Uh, the damage was done on the ground by Philly, 236. Rushing yards with four rushing touchdowns. Boston Scott had two touchdowns, and Jordan Howard had the other two. Uh, Jalen Hurts uh, also had, um, yeah, he has some um, yardage there. But uh, crazy, um, crazy. Yeah, uh, the Lions. Uh, yeah, just lots more, a lot of more crying. And uh, I just don't. I actually think that Campbell is going to get the axe. Uh, he put the blame on himself, which is understandable, but he said, I got fully out coached. This bottom line, fully <laughs> out coached. It was a horrible plan. We just sucked. We didn't do it. Uh, man, I, I got to figure this out. I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but it was <laughs> hilarious what he was saying. I, I don't see him sticking around much. Uh, I'd be surprised if he even lasts a week. <laughs> I don't think you ever want to hear your head coach going, I don't think I know what I'm doing up there. <laughs> I don't I don't think you ever want to hear him say that. It's like, ooh, did he just say he doesn't know what he's doing? <laughs> yeah, it was it was hilarious. Like, man, I I've, I've watched all his press conferences this week and I always kind of felt a little bad for him, keep crying. But this one I felt like, holy cow, buddy, like you can't say. <laughs> You don't know what you're doing, and you got fully out coached because uh, I just feel like ownership's going to make a change, man. So, yeah, of course, because it also, too, it doesn't help that you haven't you know, won anything. You, you haven't won. <laughs> like, you're, you're trying. Like, you're really trying, and we see that. We see that you're putting forth a really solid effort, but it's not counting for nothing. It's <laughs> counting for nothing, man. Zero. Absolutely zero. And that's not good enough. Not in the NFL anyways. So 40, yeah, they're... 44 to six. Uh, I saw so many people with bags on their head and they had <laughs> not a costume and uh, they were just embarrassed to be a Lions fan sitting there. Um, Jared Goff uh, was benched. He uh, had a horrible game. Uh, they, they brought in David Bluff, but he didn't do anything at all. Uh, uh, it's, it, it's just sad situation in Detroit. I feel bad. I, I, I like DeAndre Swift. I think he's a talented guy. And uh, TJ Hawkinson uh, is, is another guy that's good there. But um, the rest of the team is just just terrible. Uh, they, they probably will not win a game this year. Yeah. I th- I, yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's very well a possibility that they could not win a game. Because if they do win a game, that will be like them winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. They will explode in joy. Like we might actually see Campbell have a smile on his face <laughs> as opposed to a frown and a sad face, which is what we've seen all year so far. All year. Yeah. It's been bad there. Uh, the lions do get a reprieve. They get a buy. Uh, yeah. Going into that second half. Um, hopefully they can figure something out. Uh, maybe they can trade their coach. I don't know. Trade deadlines <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, any takers for this guy? We could, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, who, oh, Denver. Yeah. Maybe Denver's just willing to throw guys away for nothing. So you might maybe, yeah, contact them. Hey, you want to give us your coach? Uh, you know, we <laughs> saw what you did with Vaughn Miller there. Uh, maybe, maybe they're willing to give up the coach too. Yeah, that, that would be great because we need help. We need a lot of help. 
Need no. a lot of coaches. <laughs> uh, Philly hosts the Chargers uh, 105 Sunday. And, uh, man, they, uh, they all got a lot of confidence uh, in that huge win. Uh, okay, we've got 40 seconds left, third and 15 for the Giants. Uh, no, now they're facing a fourth and 15 with 35 ticks left on the clock. KC marched down and got a late field goal. They're up 20 to 17. 35 ticks left with fourth and 15. So uh, we'll see if Daniel Jones can pull off a bit of a miracle. I don't see what yard line they're on quite right now, but um, looks like sort of midfield. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no. They're only on their own 20. So, yeah, they're in big, yeah, big yeah. I, I don't see them pulling this, this off. This, this, this doesn't look good. And he's, oh, no. Oh, and he's, and he's oh sad. He, yes. Oh, they lost. Yeah, Giants just lost. <laughs> so, KC goes to four and four, and the Giants will fall to two and six. Uh, looks like Eli shaking his head pretty bad, seeing his, his Giants, beloved Giants, fall to – Two and six. Daniel Jones uh, sacked, fumbled, and uh, the lineman only ran a few yards and then <laughs> fell down. And uh, that was the sad ending for the Giants. Yeah, sure is. Sure <laughs> is. I'm sure Eli's looking at that team going, well, I guess they were only good when I was there. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. He had those two Super Bowl wins, and that was about <laughs> it. Hey, crazy. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay, uh, continuing on covering the league. Uh, last division to cover in the NFC is the East. Uh, the Cowboys uh, have a uh, – they lead with the 6-2 uh, record. The Eagles sit 3-5, and five, Washington 2-6, and six, and the Giants also 2-6. and six. Um, Denver snapped a four-game losing streak by beating Washington 17-10. Bridgewater's was uh, decent. Melvin Gordon was the really key to victory, though. He had a touchdown on the ground and a touchdown through the air uh, to power them to the 17-10 win. Uh, Justin Simmons picked off uh, Taylor Heineke twice and also had seven tackles, so huge on defense there. And um, the Broncos were able to get that uh, big win. Yeah, yeah, and then also too, what helped the Broncos in their in their effort was uh, two field goals that were blocked uh, by the Broncos D, which yeah. was huge awesome. in a very very tight game, seventeen to ten win for the Broncos. Yeah, uh, Broncos now four and four, Washington down two and six. Uh, Broncos go to Dallas. Uh, Washington gets a much needed buy for them. Uh, okay, let's switch to the AFC. Uh, as I mentioned off the top, uh, team with the best record is Tennessee, six and two. Uh, they had a really phenomenal battle with the Colts, uh, interdivisional battle, and they won 34 31 in overtime. Uh, Colts ended up falling three games back at three and five. Uh, Tannehill was great with uh, three touchdowns again. Uh, Derrick Henry was. Um, injured, so you know he only had uh, 68 yards, lowest total of the year. AJ Brown was huge with 155 yards and a touchdown. Uh, but um, as we said off the top, uh, losing Derrick Henry really is a serious blow to um, the top team in the AFC. Yeah, serious blow, serious blow. Like that—that that was their workhorse. That was the guy that they could depend upon, game after game to carry as many times as they needed him to carry. And now he's not there. So, which means that they're, as I, again, as I, as I mentioned, their Super Bowl aspirations are definitely, definitely impeded without him being in the lineup. So. Um, Carson Wentz was good. Um, he had his favorite target, Michael Pittman, have 10 catches for a couple of touchdowns, uh, but he was trying to get him late and was picked off uh, uh, to set up, uh, the winning field goal for the uh, for the Titans. Uh, Jonathan Taylor was great as as always. Uh, he had a touchdown on the ground and uh, three catches for fifty two yards through the year. Jack Doyle had a touchdown there. Um, 
in that AFC South, Titans are six and two. As I said, Colts are three and five. Jags one and six, and Texans one and seven. So uh, it's pretty much going to be a cakewalk, uh, I think, for uh, Tennessee. Though um, you know, with with Jags and Texans uh, in this division, Colts three games back already after eight games. Uh, I think uh, you know we're going to see them in the playoffs. We'll see what they do to uh, shore up that running attack, but. Um, yeah, it must be nice to be able to be in a division where you get a cakewalk to the playoffs. Yeah, it, it's it's super cool. It's great because the rest of your team suck. They're so bad. They're awful. And then you just get to beat up on them every other week, get some wins, pad the stats. Yeah, man, it, it, it makes getting into the playoffs that much easier. Mm-hmm. And hopefully once you get there, besides Derek Henry, you're you're mostly healthy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the Sunday nighter has the Titans playing the Rams and the Colts uh, host the Jets on the Thursday nighter. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, both teams uh, in action on prime time. Uh, OK, so that was the South. Uh, let's look at the North. The Ravens had a bye. They lead the division with a five and two record. Uh, Cincinnati had an opportunity to get in front of them with a Six and two record, but they fell to five and three with that 34 31 loss to the Jets. And you mentioned the Jets off the top. Uh, man, uh, White had uh, 405 yards passing, 37 for 45 with three touchdowns. Passer rating was 107.9. Uh, that 405 yards was the most by a Jets quarterback since the year 2000 with Vinny Testaverde. And um, man, Zach Wilson has had all sorts of trouble there this year, but uh, it's incredible to see White have this uh, much of a performance. Do you think this is a one-off, or or is he legitimate? Well, I guess we're going to find out because I, I I think he's going to be starting in the in the next game because Zach Wilson will still be injured. But um, um, I think the coach said it best in the in the in the post game interview saying that, you know, we're going to go roll with the guy that's going to win us games. Yeah. So everything's on the table. And Zach Wilson, let's be honest, hasn't looked great no. like at all. So, yeah, yeah. hey, man, we'll, we'll see if uh, if this is a one-off for Mr. White or if he can replicate this uh, again. I love that uh, Philly special where he caught the two two-point conversion uh, in the end zone there. That was uh... – Great, and it actually showed off his athletic ability as well. Yeah, yeah, it it showed that he he does have some. He's got some wheels back there, like he can he can do some things other than just uh, throw the football. Yeah, uh, Michael Carter was uh, his favorite target. Uh, he had uh, 15 carries for 77 yards and a touchdown, and nine catches for 95 yards. Jamison Crowder also had eight catches for 84 yards. Um, Joe Burrow has had a phenomenal year. Uh, Joe Mixon has as well. They've got a lot of weapons there in Cincy. For some reason, Jamar Chase had an off game, only uh, three catches. Uh, he did have a touchdown, but um, yeah, I was shocked. I think everybody was shocked. I think especially uh, people that um, had the uh, keeper pools, I think uh, they would have picked uh, the Jets to lose this one and Cincy to roll and and catch the Ravens with their record. So uh, very big surprise. Uh, Bengals host the Browns in the early window Sunday, and the Jets go to Indy for that uh, Thursday nighter um, against the Colts. Uh, there was another uh, interdivisional battle in the AFC, the Steelers edging the Browns 15-10 to 10 for their third straight win. Uh, it was kind of weird because they lost their kicker early. Uh, they did a fake field goal and uh, Boswell took the ball and was running towards the sideline, trying to find a target. Uh, Didn't find anybody got absolutely smacked and hammered off the field, uh, got a concussion and they didn't have a field goal kick for the rest of the game. So they had to improvise, uh, got a huge touchdown um, and by Patrick Fearmuff. And um, he made a great grab in the back of the end zone, juggling, TD and they pulled out the win, but uh, it was weird seeing them with no kicker at all. Yeah, it, it was odd because it's like, well, we would kick the extra point if we could. 
<laughs> but we'll have to go for two. <laughs> it's yeah, because you you never you never imagine that your kicker is going to be uh, taken out of the game for uh, concussion protocol, which yeah. is what he was taken out for. So um, hopefully he'll be available for the next game. Hopefully he'll be fine going forward. But uh, big win for the Steelers. Big win. When a lot of people were counting them out, I know I did. Yeah, they sure have been. And get their third one straight win was huge. Uh, Deontay Johnson has been great uh, recently. Six catches for 98 yards. Chase Claypool had a good game. Four balls for 45 yards. And he had a couple runs for 16 yards. I'm, I, I'm really liking that they're getting him in space. They're getting him the ball on the ground or through the air. Uh, he's such an elusive guy and large, hard to bring down if he gets some, uh, you know, some, some speed going through that line there. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's smart to get him the ball more because he's a playmaker mm-hmm. and that's what you want to do. You want to get uh, your playmakers the ball so that they can create. Yeah. Uh, Baker was playing hurt. Baker Mayfield was playing hurt. Wasn't very good. No TD passes. Uh, Nick Chubb returned from injury, but he seemed a bit off. Uh, Dearness Johnson, uh, who looked great uh, with Chubb and Hunt both out, uh, he had um, a touchdown run. And uh, uh, I don't know what's wrong with uh, Odell Beckham Jr., non existent game as well. Uh, he just doesn't seem to be on the same page with Baker. And uh, yeah, he's having a really disappointing year. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh... He's not looking too good right now. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, him and uh, Mayfield cannot get on the same page. A little bit concerning. Cleveland sits last in the north now. Um, and uh, Pittsburgh, as I said, won three in a row to be uh, four and three, sitting in, in the third place. Cleveland's four and four. Uh, Steelers host the Bears on the Monday nighter. And the Browns visit the Bengals uh, early window uh on sunday uh okay let's turn to the afc west the raiders had a buy and they sit first at five and two uh the chargers uh are now in second place at four and three uh they were upset 27 24 by the patriots uh one of the biggest reasons for the win was adrian phillips the former charger he picked off justin herbert twice and one of them was a pick six that uh, really seemed to change uh, the game and uh, give the Patriots a huge, huge upset win. Yeah. Um, that was huge. That was, that was literally the game. Um, Chargers valiant effort, but the, the Patriots were just, <laughs> they're better, the better team yeah. on this uh, particular night. Jones went 18, 35 for 218 yards and uh, Harris carried 23 attempts, 80 yards for one touchdown. Yeah. Uh, Nick Folk had four field goals there, and uh, that was huge for them. Uh, Canadian Josh Palmer had a uh, a 24 yard touchdown catch. Uh, nice to see him get in the end zone. Uh, I'm hoping he gets a few more opportunities to show what he's got. Uh, great to see that uh, Canadian uh, in a wide receiver position like Claypool. And um, yeah, he just hasn't had a ton of targets, but. Uh, maybe with that 24 yard TD catch, uh, he'll get some more opportunity. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, hopefully he does get some more opportunities with that. And, uh, yeah, goes forward. Okay. So, um, the rest of the division, we've covered the Broncos four and four and the chiefs, uh, sitting also now, uh, the chiefs are also now four and four. So, uh yeah we'll see um, if they can keep it together uh chargers go to philly to face the eagles 105 uh the patriots go to carolina for the early window uh, facing the panthers um okay we've been covered the entire league except for one game afc east the division leading bills faced against faced off with the dolphins uh absolutely blew them out last time 35 to nothing but it was really close early, uh, 3-3 at the half. Um, and then Josh Allen came out in the second half, was able to lead the charge, get the 26-11 win. He had a um, uh, couple of TD passes himself, one TD run himself, and uh, 55 yards on the ground, 250 through the air. Cole Beasley was his favorite target. Uh, 
10 catches for 110 yards. Uh, Stefan Diggs had a TD. Gabriel Davis had a TD. Um, yeah, it didn't seem to be much of a trouble, much trouble, but it was really strange to see the three, three score at the half. Yeah. Yeah. It was because it was just, uh, uh, both teams offenses were doing absolutely nothing. So it took a while for the bills offense to finally wake up, which they did. And, uh, yeah. And then once they woke up, they took it to the dolphins big time. Yeah. And as you said, Allen had a great game, 29-42, 249 yards, two touchdowns, and then one touchdown on the ground, too, as well. And Cole Beasley, 10 receptions, 110 yards, man, yeah. had a huge game. Uh, there was a story about Cole Beasley recently. Uh, he's been getting a lot of uh, flack and a lot of trouble for his postings on Twitter, uh, his views on um, – covid and vaccinations and a lot of things that he got into some fights with people so he has decided no more twitter delete deleted his account not going on there anymore he said all of a sudden a huge weight was lifted off his shoulders and he feels like um you know he's just going to concentrate on football no more social media for cole and uh yeah let's hope we don't want to uh, you know hear all these crazy fights that he's been getting into on social media yeah, it's kind of something that maybe a lot of athletes should go into, which is just take themselves off social media because like there's a lot of negative stuff on there. There's a lot of people that are willing to or want to be argumentative with you on whatever your position is, yeah. whatever it may be. So to make your life simpler and easier, just not be on it. Yeah. yeah. Super easy. Makes, yeah. Makes way more sense. Yeah. I would I would recommend it to many athletes out there. Uh, okay, the Bills play the Jags early window on Sunday, and the Dolphins host the Texans. And uh, that wraps up um, the NFL coverage for the week. So uh, let's turn to the UFC. They had um, the big UFC 267 with a couple of title fights on the line. Uh, coming to us from... Abu Dhabi and uh, an early, early start, 7.30 a.m. Pacific. Uh, there was fights going on and uh, wrapped up by about 2 o'clock. Um, everyone was talking about this uh, huge light heavyweight fight between Jan Blahovich and Glover to share a couple of old guys. Uh, Blahovich has looked great uh, recently, but he came up against a... a Tougher, better opponent uh, on Saturday. Uh, Glover Teixeira at 42 years old uh, takes the title and uh, was super dominant. It wasn't even close. It was just a one-sided affair. Uh, once he took him down, uh, just beat him up, sunk in a rear naked choke and forced him to tap. It was, uh, it was pretty surprising how uh, one-sided it was. He dominated him when it went to the ground. Like... Utterly and completely dominated him. Like he was in such, he was in a higher stratosphere of class yeah. when it come to, came to his grappling. Like, Black, Black, oh, oh, come on, I can do this. Lahovich. 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 Damn, I'm still saying it wrong. But, anyways, he didn't have a chance. He didn't stand a chance. And he's a big man. He's a strong man. But Tejera just imposed his will on him. Yeah. Every time he, they went to the ground. And then in the second, when he flattened him out, like, like it was easy. Like it was nothing. Yeah. Oh, man. I was just like, oh, this looks like the beginning of the end. Oh, it is the end. Yeah. And it's over. Yeah, it was so crazy. It just happened so fast. And, uh, yeah, the tap was quick as I've ever seen after – uh, sink in um, uh, of a choke like that. Uh, incredible uh, that he was back seven years after his last title shot against John Jones. Um, he, yeah, I mean, to lose that title shot at 35 years old against Jones and, and not look good doing it, but just keep grinding and grinding. He had five wins in a row coming in. Uh, he's got the most finishes in light heavyweight history now with 13 and uh, tied for uh, no, he's uh, first place now with the most wins ever 16 
and uh, fourth most significant strikes. Um, just, uh, yeah, he's uh, all of a sudden uh, becoming one of these guys that's going to be, you know, considered one of the elite guys in, in the world history of heavy, light heavyweight division. Yeah, yeah, and, and, he's, and he's doing it at 42. 42! Like, yeah. That's just, like, like who, who are you, Randy Couture? <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. I think I think it's just it just it's a testament to the fact that he's been on this grind for that long and he's never given up hope of becoming the champion. He's yeah. never given up hope, he's never given up on himself. And look at this. Lo and behold, he gets it done at 42 years young. Amazing. Yeah. Uh he was the underdog going in. Uh, the betting favorites on Saturday were 12 and two. He was one of the only uh, one of the only underdogs that was able to pull out uh, pull out the victory. Um, yeah, I don't know where uh, what happened to Blahovich. He said, "I left my Polish power back in the locker room there. Don't know what happened to me. It was uh, really really shocking how uh, yeah he just didn't seem to be uh, himself." Um, there's lots of talk now that uh, once he recovers, um, he will be facing Alexander Rakic, who is the number three ranked guy in the division. And it sounds like uh, Teixeira will do his title defense against Yuri Perhachka, who's number two. Uh, he's on a 12 fight winning streak um, in the UFC. He's beat Ozdemir and Dominic Reyes by knockout. And uh, he was the backup for this particular fight in case one of the guys couldn't make it. So um, both fights sound really great. Uh, I hope they can be made soon and we get a chance to see a title defense uh, by Glover. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hope so. Because like I, I definitely want to see both of those fights. Both of those fights are great fights. And uh, I, I definitely am super curious to see how Tejera deals with Prohachka. Yeah. Um, because Brohachka has the most unique fighting style I've ever seen. Right. Period. He, he really does. Like he does things in there where I'm just like, I don't know what he's doing. I don't. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tashera is the 14th undisputed heavyweight champion in the light heavyweight division, and uh, 20 years uh, his odyssey to get himself a, a belt. Uh, Really happy for the guy. I could tell a lot of people were really happy to see the old man pull it off. Um, okay, the fight, uh, the co-main event had Corey Sanhagen facing Peter Yan uh, to try to get the interim belt. Uh, Peter Yan was supposed to face Aljamain Sterling in a rematch of their title fight. Aljamain uh, had to pull out because of an injury, so Sanhagen stepped in. Uh, Peter Yan is uh, man. He's he's a beast. He's a tough guy. I was impressed by Corey Sanhagen and uh, what he brought to the table, but um, Peter Yan is uh, just on another level. I think he is because the thing that's always been consistent with Yan in any of his fights is he gets stronger as the fight goes on. He begins to read you better. His counters are crisper, more accurate as the fight goes on. It always happens with that guy. Once he gets the read on you, oh, man, it is over. But to San Hagen's credit, he did everything he wanted to do in that fight. He stuck and moved. He was in and out. He skirted on the outside. He used his movement. He was popping his jab, popping his shots. But it just seemed to me that Yan, once it got to the, the championship rounds, the fourth and fifth round, yeah. he just began to get be a step quicker. Like a like a jab sooner than his opponent. Like it was just he just was just that one like tactical step better than Sanhagen at every moment yeah. within that fight. And that's what brought him the fight. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, sure did. Yeah, he just yeah, he just definitely uh got sharper and sharper as the fight wore on. And um yeah, I liked I liked Corey's game plan. Uh, I thought he did really well and he was very elusive, but um yeah, Jan, uh, uh, just yeah, was just a little bit superior, and uh, sure hope they can make that Aljamain Sterling Peter Jan fight uh, happen soon. 
because uh, he got robbed uh, with the illegal knee strike and getting disqualified. He was winning that fight handily. Uh, it was really tough to see a guy lose his belt on a uh, sort of an accidental knee like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, um, you never want to see anybody use their belt like that. But at the same time, it was against the rules. So that's the way it had to go down. So now that Yan's the interim champion, he has his chance to get his revenge, his vengeance, once Aljamain is healed up from his injury. Yeah, yeah. I hope that happens soon. It'd be nice for Peter to get an opportunity to do that. Uh, that bantamweight division has uh, tons of really, really solid guys on there. and I'm loving it uh, every time they put together some cards and put some bantamweights on there. Uh, super fun fight fighters to watch. Uh, okay. Uh, Islam Makachev. Uh, I think we can safely say that he will be a lightweight champion at some point uh, in his career. Uh, man, this guy is good. Uh, I think Dan Hooker was brave. To take him on but um man is he ever incredible uh this guy is um yeah he i think he's a, a little khabib uh he's going uh you know to bring another title to that aka team yeah i think it's yeah without a shadow of a doubt like look we know we all know how good dan hooker is yeah. he's really good and he had no shot against islam makachev none None. He had no shot. Like it, to me, even when I say it now, I can't believe I'm saying that. That he literally had no shot. No, no. <laughs> and and Makachev took him out. What halfway through the first on a Kimura, no. and and on a devastating Kimura at that. Once no. he isolated that arm, oh man, I think Hooker screamed. I don't think he tapped. I think yeah. he screamed out in pain. Wow. That's when the rest stopped it. <laughs> Crazy, yeah, that was uh, devastating and lethal. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad they stopped it quick, or Hooker would have been, um, yeah, in trouble for a long, long time. Um, yeah, yeah, Makashev. It's just, yeah, he's just on another level. Nine wins in a row. Uh, he's on the. He's been able to get submissions in so many ways: rear naked choke, arm bar, arm triangle, Kimura. Uh, yeah, he's just lethal there. Uh, they're talking about uh, next will be uh, Bin Benil Dariush for him, or the uh, winner uh, between Gaethje and Chandler. Um, so we'll see. Uh, Charles Oliveira, Dustin Poirier will fight for the championship uh, in that division in uh, two sixty nine in December, um, but it's shaken out. Uh, I think yeah, one more victory for Makashev and he'll get a title shot. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, he's right there. I know he was he was asking for a title shot right after, but it, it, that's not going to happen. But <laughs> it, he's right there. He's wow. literally one more fight away from getting his title shot. Yeah, number five and uh, domination. Yeah, huge domination. Uh, okay, let's talk about the uh, the Volkov Marchin Tibura fight. Um, Volkov was able to get the decision win, landed uh, really big shots. Um, his takedown defense was what won him this fight, though. Uh, I think uh, Tibura was uh, 0 for 13, uh, trying to take the fight to the ground. Uh, it's incredible how much he's improved that. Uh, Drago was so great at keeping it on the feet and uh he definitely had an advantage there yeah yeah and like you just said uh the takedown defense was what won him to fight tabora could not take him down uh one of the things he did to strengthen his takedown defense was to put on weight volkov but if you've noticed because i know i sure did all his weight is in his legs his legs are massive, massive. my friend. Massive. massive. Yeah. How do how do you how do you how are you gonna take down a guy whose legs look like a tree trunk? Yeah. Now, you know, like yeah. these are massive, man. And with with that guy with a base like that, with legs like that, Maltabora couldn't deal with that. Couldn't take him down. 
No. Couldn't do anything with that, man. And uh, that's uh, that was the main reason why Volkov won. He's, he's going to be a problem in that weight division. I'll tell you he, that much. He's a big problem. 6'7", 263, had put on about 25 pounds. And, uh, yeah, he just looks lethal there. Um, they're talking about him having a fight against the Black Beast, Derek Lewis. Uh, Lewis knocked him out UFC 229 about three years ago. Uh, Volkov was winning the fight quite handily. And then the beast just pulled out a KO victory right at the very, very end. If you remember that, Jason, oh, yeah. uh, the Drago yeah. wants his revenge. And um, yeah, I think the, that will be a super fun fight to watch again. Yeah. Yeah. He, he could get his revenge, but he's really going to have to look out for that power. Yeah. <laughs> just like anybody else in that division, if that guy hits you one good time, you go to sleep. Yeah. And then that's all Volkov did in that fight. He just made one mistake. <laughs> one little tiny, teeny mistake that lost yeah. to the fight. Yeah, boom. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the kind of uh, power that Lewis has. So careful what you wish for, but he definitely wants to try to avenge that defeat. And uh, from that performance, I could see him, uh, yeah, doing really, really well. Uh, okay. Uh, I talked about... A title contender, a guy that I see having a belt wrapped around his waist at some point in the future, Islam Makachev. Uh, I'm starting to think that Kamzat Chemayev might be another guy that uh, could be the guy that we see holding his hands in victory with a belt wrapped around his waist at some point. Um, another phenomenal performance. A year uh, layoff with covid and all the problems that he had through that. Um, but, man, you sure couldn't tell. He just looked amazing against the leech. He just dominated again. Like, he just he, – he, he's got this weird style where he gets you up against his cage, and then you're caught in this weird, I'm almost up, but I'm not up. And that's exactly where he wants you. He just wants you right there so he can just beat you up. <laughs> and then he beats you up. Yeah. And then all of a sudden – he gets your back, and you're like, I don't know how he got back there. And then you went to sleep, and you go to sleep, yeah. which is exactly what Jing Lang did. Yeah. He got choked to unconsciousness. I'll give him the respect that he's due. He went out on his shield. Yeah. But I love the fact that the rep was like, oh, well, he's not even trying to tap. I better keep a close eye on him. Okay, get off him. He's done. Yeah, he's done. yeah. <laughs> yeah that was crazy. Yeah, because he... He made about three attempts at the rear naked choke and nope, nope. Yang was, uh, you know, pulling his hands away, but then boom, he sunk it in and then he just suddenly, uh, 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 <laughs> that was it. Yeah. He's asleep and he was done. It was, um, incredible. Uh, I liked it, how he picked him up. He took him over to Dana white, threw him down, started yelling at Dana, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, he really <laughs> likes talking to Dana while the fight's going on. Um, I think uh, Dana loves this guy, and I think he's going to get some real legitimate shots at some top, top-tier talent very soon. Well, he should, because the one thing that is the most ridiculous stat about him since he's been in UFC, four UFC fights, I believe four finishes, he's, got, he's received one strike. Yeah. What? He's been hit once yeah. in four UFC fights. I don't even know what that means. Like, what is that? They yeah. like, like, been hit once one time wow yeah incredible yeah uh second longest active win streak francis and ganu has five uh himself and uh three others are tied with four finishes in a row um uh there's talk about him probably getting into the top 10 uh facing off against the winner between jeff neal number 10, and Santiago Ponzinibbio at number 12. Uh, they think that that's where he's going to slot in, the winner of that. Uh, they fight uh, 269, uh, USC 269, December 11th this coming year. So it'll be early next year for that. Um, they said if he doesn't want to wait for that, Michael Chiesa uh, could be the guy. So, um, But he's on a trajectory that's, uh, I think, um, yeah, I think I, I, I would say about a year, a year and a half from now, he's going to be fighting for a title. His trajectory kind of reminds me of a guy, certain Irishman, right? Kind of McGregor like, yeah, like he's just 
the way that he's shooting up the ranks and how he's doing it is definitely reminds me of Conor McGregor's uh, run. Yeah. To the top. Yeah. That's a good, that's a very good analogy. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. They, uh, guys like that, that are super confident and they're just taking guys out super quick, uh, calling their shot. Uh, USC loves those guys. And, and, you know, we saw that in the bubble when uh, COVID was happening, they gave him two fights in 10 days. Uh, he was able to get a victory in both. And um, yeah, if it wasn't for COVID, I think uh, he'd already be in the top 10 probably. Uh, but uh, COVID uh, put him out for a year, but I, I don't think it's derailing him much. I think, uh, yeah, look out. I think this is another champion down the road. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I completely agree with you on that because just every time he steps into the octagon, it's complete and utter domination. Yeah. Yeah, sure is. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the fight that started off the main card was uh, Megamed Ankalaev against Volkan Ozdemir. Uh, Ankalaev pulled out the decision win, uh, 16 and 1 in his career. Um, yeah, he's on a seven fight win streak. Uh, this combat sambo master of sport is um, another really, really top contender, uh, sitting at number seven. A dominating win over Ozdemir, who was number eight. Uh, top five uh, guys going to be coming next for him. Oh, yeah, man. Um, he, what he did to Ozdemir was he made him reluctant to throw shots, throw punches. Because every time Ozdemir would throw something, something was coming back at him yeah. that he did not like. Right. He yeah. absolutely did not like. And once I saw that Ozdemir was being more of a shell you shelling up and being more defensive in his approach that's when i knew he lost the fight yep. because he was not willing to trade with ankaleov he was not willing to go there with this guy and that just shows you just how dangerous this man is yeah he's dangerous yeah it's incredible uh only one loss that was to paul craig um supposedly uh they're gonna try to make a fight between him and tiago santos next uh, Santos is fresh off a win off of Johnny Walker, and uh, they think that that's uh, going to um, align with uh, him. So, um, yeah, it should be a hell of a, a battle. We know how tough Santos is and how great of a fighter, uh, yeah, he can be. So, um, looking forward to that. Uh, okay, uh, let's fly through the prelims a bit. Uh, Amanda Hebas had a really big decision. <laughs> victory there in the premier fight uh anything you want to say special about that one well yeah she was just able to keep her like uh uh to keep her distance in that fight especially after the after this into the second and third rounds uh she had her, her 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 distance within the fight like with the striking and everything was uh was on point yeah. and definitely in that fight so and that's what won her the fight. And then also to her takedown defense had improved from the first round to the second and the third. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, okay, uh, Zubera Tukogov uh, had a, a decision victory over Ricardo Ramos, uh, another guy that's being trained by Khabib. Uh, that his, his nickname is The Warrior, and uh, he looked... Absolutely massive. Uh, he has a lot of trouble making weight. I don't see him sticking in this division long, but um, yeah, he uh, uh, he looks good in this performance. And um, so many of these guys are coming from this part of Russia that, uh, man, uh, it is crazy how good a team they got there. Yeah, it is, because they head down from these mountains or hills where they, they finish like wrestling with grizzly bears and they decide, well, human opponents – could be a challenge let's try it so you know and he, he looked he looked fantastic in that fight he, he controlled the fight um his control his octagon control was very noticeable to me in this fight against ramos and uh great win by uh two oh my god took took up to got to dog off to god to cup that guy <laughs> took yeah. a, took a go to go i think, I think yeah I'm gonna go with Tugagov. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he looks super accurate too. He was sitting around 
fifty percent of his strikes uh, for most of the fight ended up about forty two percent. But uh, man, he uh, yeah, he's a he's a talented Russian and uh look out featherweights uh another guy's coming there was so many russians on this card it was insane uh they just came uh prepared uh they most of them have been waiting and waiting and waiting to get an opportunity because of uh visa issues haven't been able to travel to the u.s glad they finally had an abu dhabi card uh, we could see a lot of these guys for uh, it's been a while yeah it has been a while and also too i like the fact that they actually just did this card at that time, at that time frame for them over there. And also too, it just, it's just a more of a natural thing for the fighters instead of them having to get up and fight at, what was the last time they did that? I think the fighters had to fight at three in the morning or something like that. That's completely yeah. unnatural. This yeah. is more of a natural thing for them to do. And that's what they should continue to keep doing. If they can, if they keep having like the fights over on Fight Island and stuff like that, just do it at their time zone. Forget it, right? Because it's just way too hard for the athlete to fight yeah. at these unnatural times. It was uh, it was great to see. Uh, uh, it was really great to see this battle uh, between the two Russians, Duryev against Kopilov. Uh, Duryev even broke his orbital bone, but was able to get the victory. Uh, Ten fight winning streak now for him. Uh, he was dominant, especially in that second round, lots of ground and pound, 10, eight round, uh, and, uh, was almost able to finish that, uh, with a rear naked choke right at the very end of the round. But, uh, uh, Herzog, uh, I really liked the way Herzog came in. Uh, there was a fence grab that happened. He immediately saw it, put them back into position that they should have been. There was an immediate takedown. He also uh, brought in the doctor uh, at the end of the second round to see if the guy could continue. Uh, I thought he handled this fight really well. There was another referee on the card that uh, was really, really bad, and we'll talk about him in a second, but uh, I liked Herzog and the way he controlled this fight. As good as Herzog was in this fight, the ref that did the, the fight before that was just that bad. Yeah. That bad. He was that bad that Mark Goddard, the overseeing ref of the entire UFC for this particular event, kicked him out. Yeah. Said, you're done. Goodbye. Your yeah. services are literally no longer needed. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. No, no, not, not a guy just immediately removed like that. He was supposed to uh, be handling another fight, and Goddard stepped in and said, no, I'm taking care of it. You go and sit back down somewhere else because uh, you're, uh, yeah, you're, you're horrible. Uh, his name was Vacheslav Kisilev. Uh, he was so bad. It was brutal. The, the massive beating that uh, the, okay. the French fighter Benoit St. Denis faced against uh, uh, Zaleski dos Santos. Oh my God. It was just so, 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 so brutal. Also, um, St. Denis got an eye poke. He said he couldn't see, and he's like, okay, sounds good. Hey, ready to go, and he sent him back in there immediately. He didn't even call for the doctor to come in. Uh, it was one of the worst referee performances I've ever seen. It was it was horrible. I, I do not know how this guy even got an opportunity to, to uh, referee a fight. How did it happen? Well, I'll tell you this much. I don't think he's going to get an opportunity to referee again. No. <laughs> I think he's literally done. You know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Like, I, I don't think, I don't think he's going to be get, coming into the octagon to ref again. Uh, not after that performance. Um, and then even with the guy saying, I can't see, and he doesn't even bother to get the doctor to come see him. He just goes, eh, it's too bad for you. Fight on. <laughs> yeah. like, what are you talking about, man? Oh, man, it was so crazy. Uh, it was one of the craziest beatings that I've seen a fighter have. Uh, they, they, the uh, analyst talked about him being a uh, one of those special forces guys, and he had a massive heart. Uh, the guy just wouldn't give up. Uh, his corner said the same thing uh, a million times over. I'm not throwing in the towel on any of my fighters. Uh, so that's what they made the uh, uh, made a statement after. Um, 
it, it made me think about the Deontay Wilder Fury 2 fight when uh, Wilder was bleeding out of his ear and everybody thought that there was some uh, brain damage, something happening inside his head that was causing him to bleed out of his ear. And his corner actually said, you know, that's that's it. Uh, we we want to uh, stop this performance. And uh, he fired those guys. And so it's pretty tough, man. It's pretty tough to be a cornerman when you really want to save your guy, but he's going to fire you because you stopped the fight. Uh, but they should have stepped in and they should have called it off. It's your duty as the quarterman, as the coach, to protect your fighter. Even if the fighter has the heart of a lion and wants to continue, it's still your job to protect him from himself. Yeah. That's your job. Even if you get, get fired, it doesn't matter. It's your no. job to do that. So, yeah, it was tough. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I couldn't believe how much St. Denis uh, making his USA debut could take that abuse and keep on. But uh, yeah, it was, it was tough to see. And uh, let's hope this guy never refs again. That was, uh, that was not up to the UFC level. Uh, he might be able to referee on some regional circuits, maybe back in Abu Dhabi, but let's never see him in the UFC again. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with not seeing him in there. Like, like, I'm sorry. I'm still shocked that when he goes, goes, oh, so you can't see? Good enough for me. Fight on, like, what, what are you talking about? Wow. Yeah. It happens. Oh, so no. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. We need to uh, go on. Do you want to mention any of the other uh, fights on the card? There's still a few more that we haven't touched on, but uh, we're running out of time. Uh, anything uh, that you need to, need to mention? No, not for me, man. I I I like the uh, I like the fights that we covered over the um, the course of the prelims. Okay, I was sad to see uh, Mr. Finland win. He's uh, become uh, one of my favorites, but uh, just not enough against Lerone Murphy. And um, yeah, but uh, phenomenal card. So many great fights on that card. Uh, they really really stacked it, and uh, very fun to watch and. I, I'm happy. I, I hope they have more cards early. I got it out of the way. Had a Saturday night. I could do anything else, and uh, it was fun. It was fun having it early. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't. Mind. Yeah, I, I don't mind having seen the like the early cards either. Um, it just kind of frees up your nighttime, so mm. you can do whatever you like at uh, during the evening. So it's yeah. good. That was good. Uh, okay, so we're less than a week away from uh, UFC 268 at Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. Uh, we've got a rematch uh, in the main and co-main event. Uh, belts on the line in the welterweight division, Kamaro Usman against Colby Covington. Uh, Usman dominated last time. Uh, Colby has become... Uh, Probably the most hated man in the UFC. Uh, what do you think we're going to see in this one? Can you hear me? Oh, you froze. You froze for a bit there. You Are you good? Can you hear me? Am I froze too? <laughs> oh no, we lost him. Let's see if he comes in again. Give him a check. A sec here. Yeah, here he comes. Oh, sorry. Wow. Yeah, you froze. Uh, I guess I froze and then yeah. we lost you for a sec. So I popped out, <laughs> but I popped back in. Okay. All right. Okay. I was. I was just talking about the uh, rematch between Usman and Covington. Uh, do you think we're going to see the same as the first fight, or does Covington uh, come out with something different and pull off the big upset? Well, I think he's going to come out with a different um, approach because he, he should. Because yeah. that first approach, well, clearly didn't work. He lost. So I, I, I would imagine he's going to add a couple new wrinkles to the game on what he's going to bring to the table against Kamaru Usman. But... 
Well, Kamaru Usman is also going to bring a couple new wrinkles to the game because he is not the same fighter that you fought last time. He right. has improved significantly. Yeah. So with that being said, I'm looking forward to seeing a huge war. And we all know this. Colby Covington, super tough. Yeah. You can break his jaw and he'll still keep coming yeah. after you. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to an absolute war. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing the best version of both of these men. Yeah, me too. Yeah, can't wait. Uh, this is an, a rematch as well in the co-main between Rose Namajunas and Weili Zhang. Uh, Rose won the belt off of Wei Li with a head kick, uh, knocked her down and grounded and pounded her uh, to get the victory. Um, Wei Li said she got a bit lucky. Uh, she thinks she's the better fighter and uh, will prove it. But uh, Rose has looked uh, phenomenal in, in many fights recently. Um, but what do you think we're going to see in this one? I am going to say I think we see Rose triumph once more again. Okay. I don't know what 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 strike it's going to be off of, but um, I have a feeling that Wei Li might uh, be a little bit overconfident coming okay. into this fight, not believing that Rose um, belongs in the same octagon with her. I, don't, I think she kind of maybe doesn't believe that where she should. Yeah. where she could be very, very conscious of a very dangerous opponent in Rose. Yeah. She is. So. She's super dangerous. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the lightweight battle between Justin Gaethje and Michael Chandler should be fun to watch. Yes, I think that will, this will be, this could be, this could have the potential of being the fight of the night because, uh, you know, Gaethje is just going to do one thing. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to try to take your head off. And then Chandler... Well, I think he's going to. I think he's going to revert, re, resort to his wrestling on this. I yep. think he's going to feel a couple of light kicks and just be like, "Ah, oh, man, no, no, I'm going to go to the ground with this guy. No, 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 we're not going to be standing." I think Chandler's been talking a big game, saying, "No, I'll, I'll just, I'll stand and bang with him." And I think, I think Gaethje's right, saying, "Oh no, you're not going to do that. <laughs> you're going to feel my power, and then you're just going to take me down." So. Yeah. I think it's going to be a great war. Uh, I'm really super looking forward to it. Probably will be fight of the night, I think. Uh, we've got uh, Ally Quinta against Bobby Green. We've got uh, Phil Haas against Chris Cordos. We've got um, tons of fights on the card. Uh, Chris Barnett, John Vellante. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing card uh, from New York. Uh, it's cool to have two numbered fights back-to-back uh, -back weeks. Yeah, yeah. It's it, I. I... I can't remember the last time that happened. I think it's been a long time since that's happened. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. It's great to have two events that have been uh, super great quality, great opponents, great UFCs. Yeah, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing this one uh, next Saturday. Me too. Sounds good. Okay, well, we've covered the NFL, we've covered the UFC, and now, lastly, let's uh, little, do a little look into the NBA. Uh, Raptors had a, a huge win tonight over the Knicks, uh, 113, 104 Raptors are five and three and sixth place in the East Knicks are five and two, uh, OG Ananubi had a career high with 36 points. Gary Trent jr. Had 26 and, um, yeah, the Raptors, are uh, Raptors are a fun team to watch. Uh, they've got a, a very unique, uh, lineup and a lot of re really talented young guys that, uh, are really actually quite fun to, to check out. Yeah, yeah, they do. And then they got uh, the three Canadians on there that are uh, representing well, especially uh, uh, the guard, Del Delano Banton. Yeah. I I really like that kid. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the heck he came from, but I I, I think he's going to make some noise in the NBA. Yeah. He's looking really good, like really, really good. Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm impressed with the scouting of the Raptors. I don't know how they found him. I don't know where they found him, but they found him. Yeah. I think they found themselves a hidden gem. Yeah, and I, I also love Scotty Barnes. Uh, that was a hell of a good pick. Uh, I, I, there was a lot of controversy when um, they, they wanted uh, somebody else in that position. I think it was Jalen Suggs they wanted, but uh, Scotty Barnes has looked great. Scotty Barnes has looked fantastic. He really has. He's um, He's been... I think he's been a, a breath of fresh air more yeah. than what they thought he could be at this point in time. 
and that he just continues to keep delivering. And I hope he continues to keep doing that throughout the course of this season. Yeah. Uh, so Raptors are in sixth place in the East. Uh, uh, topping the East are the Bulls, six and one. All their offseason moves and, and moves at the trade deadline are really paying off. They're going from a also round franchise to a best start since Michael Jordan was there. Yeah, and they, they, they look fantastic. They look really good. Everything that they've done up to this point has been the right thing to, for them to do. They've hit the right buttons. They've gotten in the right pieces, and uh, it's paying dividends off right now as we speak. Nice to see the Heat back up there after a down year. Uh, they went to the final, then had a bit of a down year last year, 5-1, uh, and one, sitting in second place. Um, yeah, I, I, I always really like the Heat, and uh, so, many, so many of the players uh, are easy to cheer for there. Yeah, and uh, the addition of Kyle Lowry, I think it's been – a huge piece, possibly the piece that they were missing. Yeah. You know, like, so going forward for them, it, the sky's the limit. Like it really is like they, they already had a great team and then they just added these other pieces to it to make their team even better. So yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to what the heat can do when they make the playoffs. The Knicks are looking great. Five and two Sixers are looking good as well. Five and two wizards are surprising me at five and two. I didn't expect uh, that coming out from them. Uh, three and oh at home and, and looking great. Uh, Charlotte's had a, a absolute resurgence and uh, they're five and three on the year in seventh place. Uh, the Nets are a disappointment and the Hawks uh, both sitting at four and three, eighth and ninth in the, Conference, um, yeah, I don't know what's wrong uh, in both those places, but uh, not a good start to the year so far. No, the, the Nets, it's, Kyrie's not around, so that's probably one thing. Uh, but <laughs> that's for the Hawks. I, I think it's just, you know what, it's just the beginning of the year. I, I think those guys are will get it together. Actually, more importantly, I think Nate McMillan will get that team back into shape. Nice. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. Uh, the Bucks have been hit by a ton of injuries. They uh, really have had so many of their guys. Uh, they were without four starters last night. Chris Middleton was sick with some flu. Uh, Drew Holiday, Brooke Lopez, and DiVincenzo were all hurt. Uh, they've dropped three straight home games in the last five nights. Uh, Rodney Hood was actually hurt last night as well. Uh, Giannis led the team, but um yeah all by himself uh, can't pull out the victories uh they're three and four sitting in 11th place uh they got to get healthy or um yeah they're gonna take some more losses yeah yeah and they're you know what their their success will be predicated right now on their health it's just going to be a matter of time before they get healthy and then they start winning games again yeah uh celtics had a bad start too two and five um, yeah, they're, uh, they seem to be in a bit of disarray to start the year. Kind of thought that was going to happen when you still, you have two incredibly young studs and then there was nobody else. Yeah. That's their problem. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Good point. Uh, turn to the West. We've got the jazz and warriors both sitting at five and one. I think a lot of people didn't expect the warriors to come out of the gate so well being that Clay Thompson's not back till January. Um, Steph's uh, already flexing his MVP muscle, and uh, some of the younger guys are contributing well, and uh, they've had a really good start. Yeah, they just got a, they just got a nice meld of young and old players, uh, and they, they, they seem to be gelling really nicely. So once Clay comes back, it's like, oh, so if Clay can come back to like 90% of himself or whatever percent that he's going to come back at. Yeah. Yeah. That, that team might have a chance this year yeah. to make some noise in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, Lakers are off to a tough start. LeBron's hurt already. Lots of injury troubles there. And uh, seems like uh, Russ is having a hard time fitting in there. Uh, we talked about, I definitely talked about the Lakers being so old, uh, maybe they're going to be injury prone this year. And um, yeah, this first week and a half uh, so far, um, that's what's causing them the most problems. Yeah, they're old. They're old and decrepit. 
a lot of things hurt. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're, they're just going to have to take their time getting the, all these guys back into the lineup. And then for the guys that are still out of the lineup that they haven't had a chance to even fit into the rotation because the Lakers haven't even solidified the rotation. Yet. Yeah. Like none of that is solidified yet. So they have to wait till everybody else is healthy and then figure out exactly what their lineups are going to look like. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, some of the teams that are surprising uh, with the losing record so far are the Suns, two and three. Uh, the Clippers, only one and four. Uh, Blazers, three and four. Um, wasn't expecting to see these guys already struggling. Yeah. Well, unfortunately for the Clippers, uh, with the loss of Kawhi and not knowing when he's going to be able to come back, he might not even be able to come back this year yeah. because of the severity of his injury. So. The Clippers are going to be just led by their superstar, Paul George, and kind of like, that's it. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. And for the Blazers, I, as far as I'm concerned, they just didn't do enough to improve their team. Right. They, they clearly did not do enough to improve their team. If I'm Damian Lillard, I'd be looking at it going, eh, so that's what you did for me. Great. Nice. Nice work, guys. Nice work. Yeah, pretty crappy, yeah. Uh, you mentioned Paul George. Uh, he sits fourth in the league in scoring average, 27.6 points per game, and leads the league in steals per game. Uh, so he's trying his best uh, doing what he can, but uh, I guess not enough around him to, uh, yeah, uh, doing, uh, yeah, without Kawhi and not enough other guys to uh, be able to pull off some wins. Yeah, it, it, he's just lacking that scoring punch or his uh, running mate, which is Kawhi Leonard. And uh, they're just the Clippers are just not as good, obviously, clearly, without Kawhi in the lineup. Yeah. Uh, when it, we go down the stat sheet down to three-pointers made, uh, of course, Stephen Curry is leading the league with uh, 31 three-pointers made. Uh, his brother... Uh, is shooting three pointers at 63% this year. Uh, imagine if they could get both these guys on the same team, the brother duo, uh, they'd be unstoppable from downtown. 63% of his threes this year, Seth Curry's hit. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, this is a one lone time where you can look at his, his brother and say, I think I'm a little bit better than you right now, bro. <laughs> Just a little bit better. <laughs> I love it. Uh, assist per game. Chris Paul's leading the league again. Uh, Trey Young, second place, uh, 10 assists per game. Really good to see Trey uh, dishing the ball uh, as he was quite a bit uh, during that run last year. Yeah, he's, he's improved and his floor generalship has uh, ranked up a level uh, from the playoffs of last year. He's he's has he's exercising greater control of the game as his uh, career is going along. I wanted to mention two guys that are having an, a really amazing start to the year. Uh, John Morant with the Grizzlies. He's actually tied uh, for the top in scoring points per game with Steph Curry, 28.7. Uh, he's looked really great so far coming out of the gate. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's just awesome to watch like he's just pure entertainment he's so exciting so explosive and just uh so magical to watch yeah. it, it's 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 just a pleasure to watch him play basketball it really is it's been incredible yeah uh the other guy is miles bridges with the hornets having a massive breakout season more than doubled his scoring average from last season he's had three 30 point games in his first five uh, 26.2 points per game on 65% shooting. Uh, man, uh, he is uh, just showing how talented he really is. Yeah, he's showing that, and he's showing the fact that the Hornets um, made the right choice in drafting him onto the team to go along with uh, LaMelo Ball. So, um, Congrats to Mikael Bridges because he's looking fantastic right now. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned uh, the Nets a little bit. Uh, 
Uh, KD got ejected yesterday for shoving Kelly Olynyk. He got a flagrant foul the game before. Uh, him and uh, James Harden aren't having very much fun. James Harden has been having an absolute terrible season so far. Uh, you and I talked about it. Uh, basically coming down to his little cheating moves that he was doing last year, last few years where he was getting sent to the free throw line 10, 15 times a game over uh, a move that they considered cheating and they finally got it out of the league this year and um, he doesn't know what to do now. Well, I, I guess you could call these rules that, uh, that they, that they've changed. Like maybe they call them the hardened rules Yeah. because like they did this with the, with the, with the idea of seeing, how it would affect James Harden the most. Yeah. Well, we've seen how that is, and his scoring is way down. I think it's gonna it's gonna take him a long time to adjust to how the rules and how the referees are officiating the game now. Like, yeah. I think it's gonna take him a long time because he's been doing that stuff. He's been doing those moves for years now. It's gonna yeah. take him a long time to try to work that out of his game. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't know what he's gonna do. Yeah, it must be, must be very bizarre for him because, um, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was part of his uh, big part of his game, and and it's no longer there. I'm glad they made the move, so it just didn't seem right. Keep sending these guys to the free throw line. Too many stoppages, and yeah, it's uh, it's good they got it out of the game. I think it's gonna make for a more exciting NBA. Uh, I noticed this amazing ranking this week. Uh, dead money that's being paid to players that are no longer on teams that they sign contracts with. There's going to be $158 million paid out this year to players that are no longer playing for the teams that they signed the contract with. Uh, number one is Blake Griffin. He's getting paid $30 million from Detroit this season to not play anywhere near there. Uh, 30 million dollars the Pistons are playing him paying him still this season not bad not bad if you can get it it and that's that's nice that's good <laughs> money right there that's real good money <laughs> Kemba Walker 26.2 from OKC uh those two guys are in the stratosphere all themselves but uh Aminu's getting 10 million from San Antonio Batum's getting 8.85 from Charlotte DeAndre Jordans get almost $8 million from uh, Detroit as well. Uh, Joachim Noah, who hasn't been in the league for a few years, is still getting almost $6.5 million from the Knicks this year. Uh, <laughs> it goes on and on and on. It's crazy. Uh, this guy, number 20, I don't even really remember this guy. Larry Sanders, still being paid by Milwaukee, even though he last played a game for them, Seven seasons ago. <laughs> Still on the books. Man, nice. that is a good agent, hey? That That's is a good, good agent that you can uh, not play for a team for seven years and you're still on the books getting paid by them. That's amazing. <laughs> Still on the books. Still on the books. Where can we, uh, where can we find uh, an agent like this, Jason? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe at clutch. Yeah, they seem that they seem to know what they're doing. But uh, my goodness, like that, that's just that's unbelievable that you can be out of the league for that many years and still be collecting a paycheck right. from the NBA. From yeah, the man, that, yeah. that's incredible. Hundred and fifty-eight million dollars, like for guys that are no longer even there. Like, wow, holy. Man, 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 man. Why couldn't we just have a small percentage of that coming to us? Yeah, I just, all I need is 20. Just 20%. <laughs> 20%. That's not a big deal. Uh, we've had all sorts of uh, audio and video troubles tonight. I'm sorry to our audience for that. I'm not sure where that's originating from. Hopefully we can get that sorted out for next time. But I uh, apologize to you, too. Uh, it was hard to... Uh, yeah, hard to connect the whole entire way, uh, hear each other and see each other. But anyway, uh, I had fun. Uh, it was nice to cover the sports that we usually cover. And uh, um, yeah, I guess uh, let's do it again one week from tonight.
Yes, let us do this again. It's always a pleasure. Even with the video and the audio troubles, it's okay, because we just soldier on, my friend. We <laughs> soldier on. Sounds good. Okay, man, well, enjoy the rest of your evening. I guess I will see you uh, some probably first thing tomorrow. Yep, yep, I'll see you at the lockup first thing tomorrow. Okay, bud. Cheers. Take Cheers. care. Good night. Good night. Okay, well, another edition of Complete Sports Media's podcast coming to an end. Wow, I think we uh, almost got a couple hours in there. Uh, as I said, uh, really sorry for the audio and vis- video troubles tonight. Uh, yeah, for some reason, um, yeah, some some nights it's just off. But uh, thanks for hanging in there. Appreciate your support as always. And I uh, also want to say a thank you to our partners and sponsors. I want to mention Anchor FM. The easiest place to make a podcast is go to anchor.fm and follow those details. Make yourself a podcast. It's, it's a blast. Uh, Verbero, the hockey equipment and apparel company, uh, the world leader in technology performance and value, the V350 stick is a must have and uh, pampas and possibilities they design west coast things for people uh go and check them out on their social media pages and forever living the aloe vera company for health and beauty products we appreciate your support as always and we've got some new sponsors new um, uh, partners coming on board uh, very soon so uh, keep tuned in and go to our websites complete sports media Dot com, complete media network, tons of really amazing content there. Tell your friends, tell your family, and uh, have a great week ahead. Hope you enjoyed our wrap up, and we will see you soon. Take care of yourself. Love you. Bye for now. <laughs>